Hello and welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Today, I'm going to be going over the top 5 characters plus a bonus character that I would like to see get reworked because to one extent or another, they are either lackluster or they just desperately need an overhaul. And uh, starting things off, we're going to be starting here with Santa Staros. Now, I'm not, this list isn't saying that they're like the worst of the worst characters. There are characters like some of the Galactic Republic Jedi need complete overhauls of their kits or cup or, you know, other people. But I'm just saying like some of them just need to be a little, little, little bit, they need a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more. And with Santa here, I don't know. She does do good stuff with, you know, scan, Rebel Scoundrel tanks like uh, Stormtrooper Han and Cara Dune. And all that and then uh you know the whole with the uh, uh tm reduction and all that crap well not really tm reduction uh whenever rebel scoundrels remove tm from an enemy they gain you know you know they take extra damage equal to 20 percent of their max health and all that fun stuff but it's just i don't know it's just not a very like the team you're pulling care from like mon mothma which is kind of a toss up on who you want to help boost up. You want to help boost up Mon Mothma or do you want to boost up Santa Staros, you know? Uh, and like Stormtrooper Han, he's not the worst tank, he's not the best tank. Rolo is still very mediocre. Captain Han can be a bit annoying with his reviving and all, but it's just, I don't know. I don't, I mean, hell, I don't even have full 5A mods on her, but like. I don't know. She just seems to be missing something to make her good. Yeah, she has the Omni. That's for what? Territory War? Yeah, Territory War. Like, I'm gonna fucking apply that. I mean, it's not a bad one, but, like, it's not really something I'm really gonna go out and apply, and you're not gonna see a whole bunch of Santa Staros teams on defense. It's just, it's missing something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's missing, like, something big and gack to make the team an actual nuisance or what, but it's just, it's missing something. I'm up next. It's the one and only Clone Commander 2224 Cody. Cody has been on a, a lot of people's wish list to be updated, reworked, Omid, given an Omni or something or what. Because, like, why would you not give Commander Cody the 212th Attack Battalion? Like, hell, his second special is called the 212th Attack. And it's not for any reason. He was the commander of it. And, like, even in... We can go and look at the Galactic Republic. Look, let's look at General Kenobi. Hell, he even has the 212th Attack Battalion Commander. Him and Commander Cody were the leaders of the 212th Attack Battalion. Why not give us Waxer and Boyle and some of the other 212th Attack Battalion boys and just do so, you know? Like, I, I don't get what the um, holdup is. Like... Why would you not want to? Why would you not want to rework him? Maybe, maybe we'll see something. Maybe we'll see a rework of some sort. Now that we're getting, uh, well, I mean, we won't get anything from him from the Phantom Menace, obviously. But maybe if they start doing more Clone War stuff, we'll see something for him. But he, he just needs to be reworked. I mean, he's a good fifth in the Bad Batch. He's. Uh, I know some people were excited for him to be a little better in three v three whenever Captain Rex was dropped, but like, hell, you don't even run Captain Rex under him. You run him with like the OG Rex and fives in their own teams or something like that. It's just, Cody deserves better. And I had his action figure from the Revenge of the Sith movie, like his little uh, black, I don't know if it was the black series one, but I had it and then it got destroyed by one of my dogs, which made me upset, but that's besides the point. And I really was like to see Cody get a little love. Up next is Bo-Katan Kryze. We're not talking about the Mandalore version of her. We're talking about the OG one. I have not heard good things about Bo-Katan Kryze in her new Mandalorian team. Or new Mandalore team. Because, hell, you don't even use her in that team. Apparently, you use ID-12. You use... Uh, you use... Oh, I just forgot his name. Wow, I'm blanking hard right now. You use Paz. You use Armor. You use uh, Beskar Mando. You, you literally don't even use the OG Bo-Katan Kryze. You literally use her, her Mandalore version. You use Paz and IG-12. You could probably use Armor and Beskar Mando to a better extent. Or even maybe Sabina, for God's sake. But, like, apparently, from what from, that's just what I've heard. That even with the new Mandal Mandalore version of her dropping, she's not being utilized in that team. 
I don't know if it's just because you don't want to use her to uh, inflict days on everyone, or if you just don't want to have the extra 20% text recovery, or what it is, or even just the, uh, well, that's not even health recovery. That's just extra max protection. This is the health recovery bit whenever they attack out of turn. Like, that'd be good for her, but, like, that's just, like, a better better suited for, like, model warrior teams. So, I don't know. She needs something to be good. I don't know if it would be an Ami or what it would have to be to make her actually viable for her own light side Mandalorian team. Or if she'd just be better stuck with the model warriors, I guess. People can let me know if I'm off base here or what. Okay. Now we're gonna have a two for one. This is this is uh, the bonus the bonus character I would like to see reward. So, as you guys can see here, we're talking about Dark Chipper Moth Gideon here. And if you can't notice, right down here, I have a Relic Nine Dark Chipper Moth Gideon. I I Relic Nine him. Yes, yes, I know, crazy. So let's just move my head down here a little bit. Let's look at his tags here. We got Dark Side Tank Leader Empire Imperial Remnant, right? So you would you would think yeah it, I mean let's be let's be honest here the Imperial Remnant team under him is pretty damn good. However, you go and look at Scout Troopers Imperial Vanguard, and you see a bit of a conundrum. I know uh, Calvin Awesome pointed this out in a video it was recently. This is what kind of was the catalyst for making this video. So we have this little bit here. If the if the ally in leader slot is Imperial Remnant, no other allies that use Imperial Trap. Whenever an Imperial Trooper ally begins a turn or attacks that turn, all Imperial Trooper allies gain the stack of Emperor's Trap until the start of the next enemy turn, non-Imperial Trooper allies turn, or the end of the battle. So we've got this blob here of, look, ooh, Emperor's Trap. I remember whenever I saw the kit for Scout Trooper, I was excited that we were getting another uh, Emperor's Trap team outside of the uh, Virus Piet team. What I didn't, what I failed to realize until, you know, I got, until Kevin Allison pointed out, which is kind of sad for me to say, was, you know, non-Imperial Trooper allies teams. Um, let's go back to Gideon here. Let's look at his tags again. Dark Side Tank Leader Empire Imperial Remnant. Why in the hell did CG make Scout Trooper have that clause in her Imperial Vanguard and then make and Dark Trooper Moff Gideon not an Imperial Trooper? I mean, I, I imagine why was because of, like, how OP the team would be because... Everyone else on the team is Imperial Trooper, right? So ideally, you'll probably get, what, maybe two, three, or four stacks of Emperor's Trap before Moff Gideon gets his turn again? It's just... I pour, I've poured a lot of resources into my Imperial Troopers, obviously. Like, I really have. I've poured quite a considerable amount. Like, I have basically everyone Relic 5 or higher. I have several Relic 8s. I have a couple Relic 9s now. Well, one Relic 9 in the form of Piet. But why would you make the leader of the Imperial Remnant not an Imperial Trooper whenever 90% of his faction is an Imperial Trooper? Because the Imperial Remnant is Stormtrooper, Moff Gideon, Dark Trooper, Death Trooper, and Scout Trooper. Right? Like, I mean, sure, you could do a Moff Gideon lead team with Scout under it and make the team go ballistically fast. It'd be pretty good, right? It's just... You want to do Dark Trooper Moff Gideon because of that revive and all the other shenanigans he can like pull with him with the insight and all the extra just juicy offense, defense, and uh, crit damage and crit chance and all that. It's just all I want from CG to do for Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is to give him the Imperial Trooper tag or remove the one little clause in this sentence right here of the non-Imperial Trooper allies turn. If you remove that or give God forbid, give Moff Trooper, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon the Imperial Trooper tag. It'll turbocharge his team. Would it be broken? Oh, absolutely. But I would be over the moon about it. Or, 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 hear me out. They're doing that because they are trying to future-proof it for any future Imperial Remnant characters like they could do for maybe Grand Admiral, like a new Grand Admiral Thrawn or a Captain Enoch or something like that. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I have no idea what CG has planned for these characters, but I would just like to see this team be more of a menace than it currently is. It's more of a defensive menace, yes, and it can work really well in offense with the Datacrons, but outside of the Datacrons, how well is it going to actually work is going to be my question. And now we're going to move on to the final two characters. You've probably seen flashes of them whenever I keep switching back and forth between everyone, but Darth Sion. 
Boy, oh boy, where do I begin with Darth Sion? Back in the day, before, you know, Savage got his rework and we got Talon and all these other things, the Sith trio of Sion, Treya, and Nihilus were a menace to be held, it's like to be feared and all that. And then we got uh, Talon to help with survivability and the revive. And then we got Savage to help with protection recovery. And Savage basically became the tank of the uh, Sith Triumvirate team. Um, Scion is a tank. Why Why would you not want the tank? Oops. Whoa. Sorry, just about to something on OBS. Why would you not want the tank of the team, which is Darth Scion, not Savage? Savage is an attacker. Why would you not want Darth Scion to be the catalyst of this team? Like, mine's Relic 7, eventually he'll be Relic 9 and all that fun stuff. I mean, he's got decent stats across the board, almost 100,000 protection, speed's really not the point. It's just, why, why in the world is Scion being regulated? It's not even being used in 3v3 with his own team, with Treya and Nihilus. Whenever Savage is there with his stupid Omni, it's not really a stupid Omni, but like, I'm just, I'm saying, I'm calling it stupid for, you know, just for this video, but like, well, not video, but for this little bit of the video. Just why Why can't I... Why am I more inclined to go for Savage over Scion as a tank in 3v3? Like, if they could give Scion a way to make his... Uh, I know they don't want to make his taunt... Not taunt. I don't know. I know they won't, they won't make Held by Hatred, like, proc faster because it's a 15 turn cooldown. That's the whole point of it. You have to get pain spread and all that fun stuff and yada, yada, yada. But it's just... Well, actually, it's whenever uh, Treya or Nihilus are critically hit, it reduces the cooldown by one. That also helps. But, like, I wish there was a way to just make him more of a prevalent pick for the Sith Triumvirate team in 3v3 and 5v5. I mean, yeah, in 5v5, you're still going to be using Scion, but you have Savage just constantly taunting. It's not really helping you, like, fuel your, like, fuel your held by hatred and all that. I... I I don't know. I mean, yeah, and also the fact that pain can be dispelled pretty easily is not helping him in the slightest because that's what a lot of his abilities are based off of. Like, you know, uh, you can, like, when it was his basic, if the target enemy has pain, you can dispel all debuffs on him. Torment, uh, you reduce the cooldown of this ability by one for each enemy without pain, which is good because Torment is a five turn cooldown, anyways. Break a will, you get protection recovery if the target already has pain, which is great. Um, I mean, yeah, basically every single one of his abilities has a way to inflict pain, but it's just like, I, I don't know. I just, I wish there was something to make me want to pick him over Savage in 3v3 and just make him a little bit more of a menace overall. He's back in the day, he used to be menace, but this was before we had all these new characters come out and ways to get rid of, you know, with instant nuking with Cat or just, you know, a lot of cooldown increase with Maul or all sorts of stuff you know it's just i wish there was a way i'm well, not a way i wish there was a i wish there was a rework or something to make him more of a threat to the uh current meta and all that that's that's all i wish for Scion. and then the poster child of everyone not everyone at least me personally wanting a rework darth maul oh how the mighty have fallen yes you need darth maul relic 7 for the uh, leviathan rex and all that fun stuff Yes, I do have not all six dot mods on him, but that's just because I've never gotten around to doing this, so. But it's just, back in the day, whenever the game first came out, his leadership was actually something to be, a, like, worrisome. Like, it was a worry, because you got uh, increased evasion with Sith allies, you gained uh, TM and stealth at the start of each encounter, and whenever a Sith ally is critically hit or evade, they, uh, they gain advantage whenever stealth expires, and, you know, the stealth and turn oh cool the stealth and turn order from this ability of norse taunting allies which is really good at the same time and then like you know held by hatred which is always kind of made fun of held by hatred power of hatred was kind of made fun of because of the lackluster stuff that goes on with it and you know it's just sure he gains max stacking max health equals 10 percent of damage he deals but like He's really not dealing a lot of damage, like 7k damage. I imagine there's people that have like him modded for pure offense that can do more, like get more damage out and all that. But it's just Maul's lead kind of is the catalyst for him being like a good pick for like some leftover Sith and all that. That'll probably change with Darth Bane actually becomes available. But like 
And now that we're getting, you know, actual prequel content in the form of Phantom Menace stuff with the staff and whatever other rumored stuff that, or speculated stuff people are thinking of right now, I would like to see Darth Maul be given a proper either rework or Ami to make him, like, make make him good. I'm not saying he's he's not the best Sith, but he's also not the worst. I well, There are worse Sith out there. I'm looking at you, Count Dooku. Um, not really <laughs> Count Dooku in the sense of the Sith. Like, yeah, his counterattacks is good, the shock and all that's good. So Ball may actually be one of the worst, but like, I, I, I look at Darth Maul and I don't think, oh, yes, let me go load him up into a team and I can go rampage people. I mean, you know, he does double, his basic does double attack against Jedi and he gains 100% team whenever he kills someone with his basic. The, the AoE's nice. With the inflicting of days, it's not uh, right, like sub, uh, limited to one faction or other. Maybe if it was uh, on more cooldowns or something, like a Darth Sidious army does for uh, Darth Sidious in Territory Wars. But like, I just, I just want, I want Maul to be good. I like whenever I said I wanted. I, I mean, I'm not the biggest hater of the Maul that we have for like the Mandalorians and Lord Vader. Obviously, it's just. I look at this mall and it makes me sad because if you've read his book and you know you've watched the clone wars and all that before he became the mall with the robot legs and all that, you know how of a menace he actually was and maybe his power a lot of people think he uh perceives himself as this big galactic threat whenever he's really just a pawn in the grand scheme of things which he is to pa uh uh palpatine and Sidious' plans but like i just i wish that his kit could stand the test of time a little bit more, you know? He, he like, maybe it's just me being nostalgic of, like, the game back whenever it launched, but I would like to see him be better. That's all. That's basically, like, the entire theme of this video. I want to see them be better. Like, just just make them better. That's all. Like, make a couple changes here with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. Make Sion and Maul have some sort of army to make them more powerful. I don't know what you could do with Bo-Katan to make her a viable choice for her Mandalore team. Uh, Cody just needs an overhaul. Sarah, Sana, I have no idea what you could do. It's just, let me know what you guys think. Should any of these characters actually be reworked? Should they make any changes to Dark Trooper Moff Gideon? What could they do to make any of these characters I mentioned besides uh, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon uh, any better? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if y'all enjoyed me and my ramblings for the last who knows how long this will actually be edited down to. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. I hope you have a good rest of your day.